Ah, reunited and it feels so good. DeMichael Cole and I are back together to take a look at some summer league duds for the Memphis Grizzlies. And saying duds is a strong term that will kind of debunk throughout this episode but for the sake of consistency it's the middle of july cut us some slack here there's no real duds coming out of summer league basketball but there's some guys that maybe we could have seen a little bit more out of or something at all we'll talk about that next here on locked on grizzlies let's lock in you are locked on grizzlies your daily memphis grizzlies podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day It is a wonderful Tuesday edition of the Locked on Grizzlies podcast because my wonderful partner, DeMichael Cole, and I are back together. DeMichael, as I mentioned on Monday's show, did a phenomenal job. It's hard to do this show by yourself, even when there's summer league stuff going on to talk about. Uh, to do it four days out of the out of a week, you know, very impressed with the shows that DeMichael put together. I'm excited here in a week or two to get my, uh, for DeMichael to get his revenge on me. When, when he takes some time off and uh, it'll be uh, my turn to, to scrounge up some content. And I'm looking forward to it. Excited to be back with DeMichael and back with you here on Locked on Grizzlies. Hopefully we are your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can check us out on YouTube as well. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, all those fun things. I am Joe Molinax of Bluff City Media. I also do some contributing over at SB Nation. And I mentioned a couple of times that the dapper, the dynamic, uh, wonderful co-host of mine who is also the it's Memphis good to hear Grizzlies. those adjectives again. Yes, I, yeah, you haven't been so long you haven't in a while, yeah. right? I'm sure at summer league everybody just talked about how short you are. I'm not yeah. going to talk about how your I height mean, challenged. I'm, I'm used just, to that. Yeah, I'm just going to focus on how wonderful you are, DeMichael Cole, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for the Commercial Appeal. Hopefully, uh, you had fun in Vegas. It's good to see that you didn't melt. I know it was very hot out there in Las Vegas, but uh, hopefully you had a wonderful time. I had a good time at the beach, and I will say that yeah. every day I checked my podcast feed, and while I was down at the beach, I listened to some Lockdown Grizzlies. You did a great job, partner. Well, you know, I appreciate that coming from you. I, I mentioned you a few times in there. You did. You, you could probably tell that I've missed you a couple times. <laughs> uh, it was it was, it was was cool, though, you know, getting out to Vegas, uh, a lot of long nights, but during those days. I mean, I said it a lot of times on the show. They probably got tired of me talking about how that weather was just cooking me, man. Like, <laughs> Literally man. like being in an oven. It's, and they say it's, it's a dry heat. No, it's just heat. No, no. It's just it, heat. It's, it's, it's heat. It's the same heat where you go outside and when you come back in the house, you feel physically drained. That's what it was. Yuck. Yeah, we don't want any part of that. I would not enjoy that. I am glad I didn't go to Las Vegas. Uh, although I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did because you got great content. I checked out your work over the commercial appeal, all those fun things. And shout out to my Bluff City Media co-workers. Uh, we had several folks in yeah. Bluff City Media that were out there in Vegas as well. So between Bluff City Media and the commercial appeal, we've got you covered. And of course, here on Locked on Grizzlies, each and every day, your first watch or listen. To Michael, let's jump right in on my Monday show, my return, uh, giving you a well-deserved day off. Coming back strong, on only like Joe yeah. can. Yeah, Summer League studs, right? Talking about Kenneth Lofton Jr., talking yeah. about Jake LaRavia. I even mentioned Vince Williams Jr., uh, Jacob Gilliard. I think some folks in the YouTube comments forget that those guys are currently on two-way contracts. So you can love Vince Williams Jr. all you want, but until he's on a full roster spot contract, yeah, he's not going to be a starter. He's not yeah. going to be someone that's in that mix. Uh, Jake LaRavia, David Roddy, those types of guys will. And before we get into Roddy, who will be the focus of our first uh, part of the show here, I want to preface before everybody gets mad at me on the internet. When I say duds, Summer League is literally meaningless in many ways, right? Yeah. They're exhibition games. NBA talent is limited. The Grizzlies obviously had two or three guys that even played in an NBA game actually on their roster for Summer League this year. So not something that should be taken without any grains of salt. However, there are some players, there are some ideals in terms of being an NBA rotation basketball player on a team, theoretically in the Memphis Grizzlies, hoping to contend for a championship. Maybe some things you would have wanted to see more of. And I'm going to start with David Roddy in that way, because David Roddy, as you know, to Michael, I talked about this on yesterday's show. I'm a big David Roddy guy, right? Like when we talked about this recently, like in the last few weeks on an episode, you talked about Jake LaRavia. I talked about David Roddy. LaRavia was a stud on yesterday's show. And 
Roddy is technically a dud on today's show. And he shot very poorly from three in Vegas in particular. Salt Lake City was a little bit better. I wish I had seen more of the skill set of being able to score at all three levels like we saw from LaRavia. I wish that we saw more from Roddy in terms of that facilitation more consistently. We saw it in bits and pieces and flashes, but when I watched Roddy play, I didn't get the sense that he was going to be an offensively viable piece going into training camp. Now, that doesn't mean that that's 100% viable because, again, take everything with a grain of salt in summer league. But where we saw some offensive skill with LaRavia, in my opinion, we didn't see it as prominently with Roddy. And the reason that I think that Roddy might be the next John Conchar to Michael, you know what Roddy is pretty good at? Defending. And he's pretty good at team defense in a versatile way, defending mm-hmm. positions two through four. I mentioned it on yesterday's show. I know Roddy can play the four. I don't know that LaRavia can. And I wonder if David Roddy becomes a guy that Jenkins relies on because of the options that have been discussed, because of Roddy's defense, because of his frame, his uh, his ability to defend multiple positions, perhaps that will put him in front of a guy like Baravia, who maybe has more offensive tools in his skill set. I think um, with Roddy, I want to I want to preface it like this because I don't want to put words in your mouth, but but you can correct me if I'm wrong on this because I sure. think what you're saying is kind of similar to what I believe. Uh, one thing that you pointed out was the three-level scoring from Jake Baravia. This is me talking, and then I'll get to uh, the part where I feel like I can speak for both of us. Uh, the difference between Laravia and Roddy, remember I used the higher ceiling uh, term when we had earlier episodes when we kind of talked about these two guys, is right, right, right. Laravia is known as a guy of, you look at his college highlights, you look at his, his, his G League highlights from last season, and flashes with the Grizzlies. He's known as a three-level scorer. He has the back-to-the-basket game. Uh, he has the in-between game. We know about the three-point shooting. We saw him get to the rim and draw a lot of fouls uh, throughout summer league and, you know, throw down a couple dunks, missed a lot of them too. But he got to the rim. Uh, David Roddy got to the rim exceptionally well, I think, in spurts during the summer league. That's clearly one of his strengths. But the thing is, Outside of getting to the rim, there wasn't much in the mid-range. And even with getting to the rim, that's a challenge for him sometimes because he's such a straight-line driver, as I mentioned you know, in a previous episode. There's not a lot of – he's not crossing guys over. and, and, and getting Not a ton of wiggle. He, he's yeah. going straight downhill. He's, straight downhill. He's Jerome Bettis as a running back. Whereas, I like those. He's Lindell White. Barry Sanders <laughs> is somebody else who maybe isn't doing that as well. We yeah. just lost half of our audience because they don't know who either of those people are, and that makes me feel very old. <laughs> and and here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. With the Grizzlies, he doesn't have to be this guy who's crossing guys over left to right. Sure, the Grizzlies would appreciate it, but the ball, as I said, the ball's going to be in Jaws hands, Dez hands, Jaren hands most of the time. Uh, that other player is going to be a corner boy, uh, for lack of better words. You're going to be sitting in the corner, and you're going to take three pointers. You're going to you're going to drive and kick. Uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna have a simple offensive role. So the dud for David Roddy pretty much is the fact that you you I think you said it earlier. You know, with Xavier Tillman, he's kind of a guy like uh, he's not a guy who you expect to go into summer league and light it up offensively. I wouldn't expect that from David Roddy. Either. He doesn't have the most expanded offensive game. So this setting isn't the most you know, conducive to his skill set. That's like John Conchar. John Conchar has been in the league a few years now. He's, you know, caved out his role, carved out mm-hmm. his role, whatever. But still, to this day, I wouldn't expect John Conchar to go in the summer league and just, like, no. score 25, 30 points per game, even though he's firmly in his role as an NBA player. So um, we'll get more. I, I think I'm, I'm jumping the gun a little bit there uh, with that. But, but I, I do agree from the standpoint of, you may have wanted to see more from Roddy, uh, uh, but at the end of the day, I think this is just who he is as a player. You know, he's probably not going to be that that three-level guy uh, ever in his career. We haven't seen enough of it. Even with getting to the rim, he can do it. But uh, you saw at times, you know, his height, size limitations will uh, show him being 6'4", 6'5", whereas LaRavia, uh, you mentioned we haven't seen him play the four as much, but LaRavia played the four a lot in college and, right. and, and did it well. 
Uh, I think it's something that we'll see more of with the Grizzlies as he kind of grows because he's a bigger guy. We saw him get into the rim. He was abusing smaller matchups in summer league. Just like David Roddy played the five some in college. Yeah. And, and I think that that is something to keep in mind. You've got mm-hmm. a guy in Roddy who his versatility is almost as a front court player, whereas you see LaRavia as a guy who could potentially play more consistently on the perimeter. So the, the next Conchar point was more about does Jenkins go with him because of his defensive versatility. And I think that's something yeah. to keep an eye on moving forward. Coming up next here on Locked on Grizzlies, DeMichael and I are going to talk about someone who I'm really interested as to his take watching him live and in person out in Vegas, the 18 year old Gigi Jackson. Yeah. I've never seen a young man who was the savior of Grizzlies basketball in Salt Lake city. And then people were wishing they had drafted somebody else the next week uh, in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about why all of that is a little bit crazy coming up next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Prize Picks. Big fans of Prize Picks. To Michael Cole and I are here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Obviously, NBA Summer League is winding down. Basketball is finally entering its off season, and or its true off season. And Prize Picks, maybe from an NBA perspective isn't something that'll be as uh, turned up, so to speak. But what will be a little bit more energized is playing prize picks for things like Major League Baseball, PGA Golf, the WNBA, of course, entering the second half of its season coming out of the All-Star break for them. All sorts of different sports that you can go and play prize picks with. Two to six players went up to 25 times your money. And remember, you're competing against the projections available, not against other people. It's one of the reasons I love it so much. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with a promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. It's that easy. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. We're talking GG Jackson next here on Locked On Grizzlies. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am one of your hosts, Joe Monax. Very excited to say that once again because DeMichael Cole and I were not matching today. If you're watching on YouTube, it's, yeah, it's black today. and blue. Uh, Got to get that chemistry back in the flow. You know, it's, yeah, it's our first time back after a while, so I'm sure we'll find it at some point this week. Uh, we'll we'll find we'll find ourselves again, partner. Uh, DeMichael Cole, the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis Grizzlies beat writer does a phenomenal job covering the Memphis Grizzlies. I do a slightly less good job, but I still follow the team over at Bluff City Media. You can check out my work over at SB Nation as well. I appreciate that. See, I give you the compliments. I have to fish them out every once in a while just to (laughs) make myself feel better. Someone will talk about my shiny, balding head uh, at some point, and I'll I'll need to find uh, gratification in in some other way, shape, or form. Uh, This is not a therapy session. This is Locked on Grizzlies. And we are taking a look at Gigi Jackson. And I was really excited to Michael when uh, when we confirmed you'd be able to jump on with me for the Tuesday episode here. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about Gigi because you saw him live, right? You saw him yep. in person. It was really promising to see Jaron Jackson Jr., who was out there almost every day of summer league. It sounded like, right. seemed like. I know he wasn't there every day, but he was out there a lot. He was and out he there right. a lot of the two, games. Two different trips, yeah. Yeah, two different trips. He was talking with Gigi Jackson. That was a video that went viral on Twitter over at uh, BCM Grizzlies, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'm sure other people showed those videos as well. Um, But just the idea that Gigi is a guy who the team clearly sees as a valuable commodity, but they can be patient with. And I did a piece over at Bluff City Media with Sean Coleman, mutual friend of ours, uh, who obviously still writes over there. And Sean and I talked about how Gigi Jackson moving forward should be viewed as like when the Atlanta Braves, right, or some Mm -hmm. other baseball team takes a starting pitcher or a catcher in the third, fourth, fifth round of a draft, maybe even later, Mm -hmm. that has a lot of tools but is extremely young, inexperienced. The the Braves don't need that player right now, right? They're thinking about, okay, in 2025, 2026, we'd love to have this guy on the active roster. Yeah. If you view Gigi Jackson through that lens, in my opinion, to Michael, you should be extremely excited. But the reason that he lands as a dud on this episode is because of the inconsistency that you would expect an 18-year-old professional basketball player to have. On one hand, he can hit step-back three-point shots and game-winning, yeah. game-clinching buckets. On the other hand, he makes boneheaded plays with the basketball. He doesn't finish the way that he's supposed to, given his size. There were a lot of pros and cons with his game, 
So I'm curious to Michael, when you saw him up close, what stood out to you, you know, both in terms of positives and areas that he can grow? The offensive skill set is is there. Very I mean, much there. It's, it's it's not hard to see why this guy was once the number one ranked player in his class. Like you you look, he he has stuff in his bag that Jake Laravia doesn't have, David Roddy doesn't have. Right. Uh no one at the small forward position on the Grizzlies team, period. Not even Zyre Williams mm-hmm. has. And that's another former five star group. But uh Gigi Jackson, I mean, the way he he can get to the cup. You know, he has the, the snatch back, pull back jumper that Desmond Bain really just recently started incorporating more right. you know, this past season. Like, he, he has that at 18. Like, Des, Des was 24. Like, there's levels to where this guy is offensively ahead of the curve right now. But, again, uh, you, you touched on it. There, there is some things that he has to learn. And what stood out to me, being there with him, being there talking to him, what stood out to me more than anything is – he has the willingness. Five-star right. recruit, 18 years old. You've been the best player on your team your entire life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go to college, there was some humbling there. You know, South Carolina, he he wasn't, uh, I guess, he didn't live up to the, the extremely high expectations. There's that a reason was, he was uh, available at 45 overall. Exactly, exactly. But at the end of the day, uh, coming to the Grizzlies in this situation, he was talking to me about how he understands when he's on the floor with certain guys, He's, he's going to be in the corner, and he's just going to have to sit there, wait on the ball to come, take a jumper here and there, and that's his role, as opposed to uh, when we saw in the last summer league game on Saturday when he can pull out a little bit more wiggle. He can go off the dribble a little bit more and, and show off that, you know, off the dribble game that he does have. But overall, uh, again, you, you expected the ups and downs. Uh, I think it was probably good for a lot of people who were jumping the gun on him in Salt Lake yeah. City. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, they needed to see the Goodness other side because, because I'm one, I have written, you know, this is, I, I wrote uh, after a couple games in Salt Lake City that he could force the issue on the Grizzlies similar to mm-hmm. Kenneth Lofton, the way Kenneth Lofton Jr. did. I wasn't going to say Jr. anything, but. Kenneth Lofton Jr. didn't join the roster until the end of the season, 15-man roster. So the point is, Yes, I, I I still think Gigi Jackson can push the issue. Uh, I think it'll just – you have to let this thing play out. We'll see, one, what happens injury-wise over the course of a season. Mm. And then, two, just let him develop down there. You know, go down and play in South Haven a lot of games. And maybe on the back end of the season, you say, oh, if the Grizzlies are still having those same half-court problems that we've talked about over the last couple years, that's a guy that can change some things right there. You have Zaire Williams, you have Jake Laravia, you have David Roddy, you have Vince Williams Jr. on a two-way contract. Yep. Obviously, John Conchar, as of this moment, still on the team. There are some other guys like you got a lot of good. who you talked about earlier uh, last week, excuse me, uh, mm-hmm. um, on a crossover episode of the show. Obviously, there are other possibilities, and Christopher probably gets waived. But I think that the important thing to point out here is even if there's an injury, Right. Like, say, goodness forbid, something happens to Zaire Williams. He's not able to come back and be the guy. He has to sit out again because he can't get his knee straight. You still have Roddy and LaRavia, right? You still have Mm -hmm. those guys as options. You still have Vince Williams Jr., who, despite his struggles, I think you and others have pointed out, the Grizzlies were undefeated when Vince Williams Jr. played in Summer League. And I think they lost every game that he didn't play in or something around those lines. So, uh, So, when it comes to that guy being a good defender, good three-point shooter. They are There are options on the perimeter. Now, you and I, and I, especially me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, we might disagree with whether or not those guys are ready to help on a championship contending team. Yeah. But clearly the Grizzlies disagree with me, and they think that one of these dudes is going to pop, right? They think one of them is going to be able to be a rotation player. If you assume that Marcus Smart can start and be one of those guys on the perimeter for an for, for a extended period of time, All they need one of these dudes to be able to do is give productive minutes, 12, 14, 16 minutes a night. And if one of them's able to do that, they're playing the odds that it's going to work out just fine. I think the GG Jackson has time. He doesn't need to get Grizzlies reps, and that doesn't mean that the Grizzlies were wrong to take him 45th overall. That was a developmental pick. You talked about the talent. It pops off the screen when you see him. He needs time to develop it and grow it in the Memphis Hustle G League roster is the perfect place for that to occur. So maybe I came out of some Maybe the Grizzlies could get back-to-back. 
G League yeah. of the year, huh? Maybe I think that's possibly. possible. Absolutely. He's just so young. He doesn't turn 19 until December. Right. So I think that is important perspective to keep, perhaps more than even Zaire Williams a couple of years ago. This yeah. is a project of all projects, right? That is what Gigi Jackson is. <laughs> they don't need him right now. Worst case scenario, somebody like a Luke Kennard will be available at the trade deadline that Memphis can go out and try to acquire if one of those other wings doesn't hit, right? They still have the capacity to be able to go and do that. So there's lots of plan A's, B's, C's. I feel like Gigi Jackson at this time would be like plan I or J, right? And that's okay. He doesn't need to be ready now. 2025, maybe we're having a different conversation here on Locked on Grizzlies. And we will finish this episode of Locked on Grizzlies talking about another dud, but not necessarily a dud of a player. It was a dud of the decision. I don't know if it was or not. We'll talk about it with DeMichael here next here on mm. Lockdown Grizzlies. Stay with us. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies, finishing up here on a Tuesday. I am Joe Mullinex of Bluff City Media, also of SB Nation as a contributor, joined by my co-host. So nice to be able to say that again. DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Great beat writer for the Memphis Grizzlies for that publication. And DeMichael, we've talked about Gigi Jackson. We've talked about David Roddy. The last dud on this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is not going to be a player as much as it is the decision, or maybe we're going to debunk the myth of a dud. Zaire Williams caught a lot of heat, right? I saw Mm -hmm. that over summer league. People were cropping him out of pictures. Uh, People were making it very clear that they were not happy that Zaire was there watching the games. And I was actually he had on a nice fit too. He was fresh. He looked Uh, good. He he looked good. I knew nothing about fashion. Like, I don't know about fashion, but he looked good. He, he looked like one of those guys. Like, if you didn't know who he was, you'd think, oh, that's yeah. an all-star player from the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. That probably that probably made people even more mad. Like, this guy's yeah. walking around, and, and he's not playing. But, but yeah, yeah, carry, carry on. We're, we're talking Zaire Williams right now. He he, And I think that that may be fed into the frustration, right? Yeah. The fact that he tried to look like a Jaron Jackson Jr., tried to look like even a Xavier Tillman, who, by the way, Xavier Tillman played in summer league last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, third year guy last year. Mm-hmm. Right. So Zaire Williams not participating has been the bane of a lot of Grizzlies fans' existence. Skill wise, I understand the frustration and tend to agree. But again, to Michael, you've done a lot of reporting on this for the commercial mm-hmm. appeal. Context is important here. And when you have an injury like Zaire Williams has, right, the knee tendonitis, the last thing that you should be doing with that sort of injury is running around on a basketball court. If the goal of his, and I know you and others have reported this as well, if the goal is to strengthen the muscles around that knee so that the tendonitis is not an issue come September and you're trying to gain muscle mass, he's still very lean, the last thing you should be doing is cardio, right? I don't think Memphis is worried about him being in shape come October. They're worried about him and his body being able to make it through an NBA season. And playing summer league is counterproductive to that, at least in my view. Maybe you agree, disagree with that. Uh, but I, I am okay with Zaire not playing. I don't know that it's a dud of a decision. I get the logic behind it. It would have been great to see him out there. But I'm not as concerned about his skill as I am just making sure he can actually physically compete when training camp opens in September and August. Yeah. I, I just want to October, point September and October. Mm-hmm. I just got to point out that I'm, I'm here for the, the Dr. Joe Molinax in the field, and I haven't seen yeah. this out of you before. Uh, you, you just well, I, I, in my in my day job, I do some athletic yeah. stuff as well, so I, I know a little bit about how that all works. Yeah, you just you just broke it down. I don't I don't even have to get into the knee tendonitis stuff. I just I just add the fact that this I've kind of touched on this a lot. The fact that this wasn't his decision, correct? And as an athlete, that has to be so nerve wrecking at times mm-hmm. because they're the ones that's going to take all the slant. Oh, he's soft. He's not playing it, you know, during the season when, when trainers and, and, and guys are, you know, held back in games and stuff sure. like that. And they get labeled soft and, Oh, he doesn't, you know, have the passion, the desire. And it's like, bro, the, the trainer is the medical staff is literally telling them uh, not to play. That's kind of how this stuff works uh, more times than not. But in the case of Zaire Williams, it was, it got to this because if you remember in the exit interviews, we actually talked about it on here. We were preparing for Zaire Williams to be a part of the summer league team. Yep, absolutely. And that changed over the course of the time because the Grizzlies, as they should do, you know, you review a lot of things and you go in depth and they went into the, the knee tendonitis. And we saw how that played a role into his second year, that second year jump that everybody wanted from Zaire Williams did not happen. And that knee tendonitis was a big reason why. 
So the Grizzlies are being more careful this time around. This is year three. Remember, he has a huge option, uh, which they're probably going to – I would say they'll pick it up because they have to pick it up before the season starts. So right. he, has a, he has a huge option uh, that, that has to be picked up. And I think that'll be that'll put him on the books for a little bit over six, six close to seven million dollars. Mm-hmm. So that Zaire Williams price tag is starting to go up a little bit. And you want the production. And the Grizzlies, the summer league, it has very little impact on that potential production. It is a dud, not because of that. It's a dud because of the simple fact that we can all agree that man, it would have been nice to see Zaire Williams here. Well, absolutely. It would have been nice to see. You, 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 you I mean. One, I guess he would have started at shooting guard, and and mm-hmm. you you'd have Laravia right. Vince Williams comes off the bench in that situation, so maybe not as many Vince Williams minutes. Saw how impactful he was, or maybe they go they do a little funky thing like they did last year and put. That's Zaya what I was Williams. gonna say. Zaire Witt, but that was ugly. Oh, you got Jacob Gilliam. Didn't go great. That's true. Yeah, you, you don't have to do that. Now Jacob Gilliam's out here getting seven, eight assists uh, mm-hmm. per night. You don't gotta. You don't have to force yourself to to play into that role. Uh, like they did, but at the same time, it would have been it would have been great. It's a dud because Zaire Williams didn't play. I thought he needed it. I thought it would have been great for him to get a summer league, not where they were forcing him to play on the ball as much, or uh, putting him with uh, with those guys on the floor with Gilliard, Vince Williams, Jake Ravy, David Roddy. It would have been more comparable to the role he would have with the Grizzlies, and we could have had a better gouge for how he's improved as a player. You know, whereas I talked about. The other guys, it was more about the process than the results. Mm-hmm. The difference is with Zaire, it would have been more about the results. Because uh, in him in year three, you would have wanted to see him uh, put up some 20-point performances and things like that. We just wanted to yeah. see if Kim Martin Jr. was going to play defense. We just wanted to see if Jake Laredo was going to get some shots up. Uh, that's what we wanted to see from those guys. Zaire Williams, him shooting 12 shots doesn't impress anyone. Him playing solid defense, well, he's not going to move the needle that much in summer league. You wanted to see results there. That's the difference between him and those other guys. So, yeah, it's a dud from the standpoint of, man, that would have been a good chance to see if Zaire Williams could really uh, be an impactful player in this rotation next season. Uh, but when you factor in all the outside factors that we've touched on, especially with the knee, uh, it's probably the right decision because, yeah, you you get him for six, seven games – in summer league, but then if he gets hurt at the beginning of the next season again and you're having these rotation issues and whatnot, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I think if we could rewind the clock and say, oh, Zaire Williams misses a summer league last summer to have a healthy second year, it's a no-brainer. We know what everyone would do in that case. I think the team option thing is pretty significant. To me, him not playing summer league tells me they plan on picking it up. Because they want to be able to give this guy the best. Absolutely. They're going to give him the best opportunity to succeed when he was drafted. Zach Kleiman, this is the first time he said, this guy's a project. Be patient with him. And I think that that continues. Not quite to the same level as Gigi Jackson, who we talked about a moment ago. Uh, Obviously, Zaire needs to produce going into year three, but they're giving him the best opportunity to produce. So would it have been good to see him in summer league? Yeah. But it's going to be more exciting to see him, hopefully, fully healthy in October in preseason games. To me, you get the same effect three months from now. And when that comes, you'll be able to see him closer to the season and in a more healthy place where, again, his body is able to withstand what is going to be asked of him. In terms of experience and combining it with skill, Zaire Williams should be the front runner for that starting position unless they choose to start Luke Kennard. I think Kennard makes more sense as a sixth man type, but if they start to start, or they choose to start Kennard, excuse me, Zaire, or excuse me, if they don't choose to start Kennard, Mm -hmm. Zaire makes the most sense in that spot. However, production needs to match with that potential, as you mentioned a moment ago. And we would it would have been nice to see that a little bit sooner, but I think we're gonna have to practice delayed gratification on that front. Thank you so much for joining us here on Locked On Grizzlies on this Tuesday edition of the podcast, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. We're also on YouTube. We had a very strong week on YouTube during the week I was out. Shout out to DeMichael for the great work that he did. Continue to subscribe, all those fun things. Continue to help us grow Locked On Grizzlies. Heading into Wednesday's show, partner, I I think it might be a good idea to look at you know, some of the win loss, you know, the over unders, uh, win totals are starting to come out. Maybe we could take an early glance at the Grizzlies and, and see how we're feeling about the current state of the roster, whether another move is needed, if a move isn't needed, you know, just kind of take a lay of the land perspective coming out of Summer League. And obviously, 
the Damian Lillard and James Harden trade demands still loom large as the NBA enters its actual offseason coming out of summer league. Yeah, I, I like it. Everything is starting to take shape now. Uh, we'll get into, you know, the roster decisions that have to be made and all those type things mm -hmm. down the road. But at the end of the day, you have kind of – you're starting to see the light now. You know, where we came into this offseason, remember we were talking about – we knew a trade was going to have to be made. Mm -hmm. We knew some Ross, there was going to have to be some type of reconfiguration. We knew something would probably happen with Tyus Jones. Right. But what happened around that? We had no clue. And now we, we knew with the first round pick, like all of these things were kind of obvious based on the roster construction, but we have those answers now. So now we can finally start looking forward to this upcoming season and start predicting some things around the John Morant suspension and whatnot. We haven't done that much. So yeah, maybe it's about time to start having that conversation, Joe. And we can draw it out a little bit because we're entering the dog days of the NBA offseason. I know okay. it's tough to be alone for a week. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, at least there were basketball games to discuss. <laughs> Woo! It's going to be rough moving forward. But that's okay. The Michael and I, that's why we're here. We're here to help get you through those NBA dog days here on Locked on Grizzly. So continue to stick with us. Continue to make us your first listen each and every day. We are so happy to be with you, and we look forward to joining you again on Wednesday. Until then, stay locked in, Grizzlies fans. This is Locked on Grizzlies.